<clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hi. Ned. Here. Ned. Um, do you guys, are you getting any background noise from my microphone? I'm not hearing anything. Okay, because I had this problem with this microphone and this laptop where it would get power, it would get uh, 50 hertz noise into the microphone. And my better headset is, uh, we'll get here tomorrow by FedEx. Seems okay for, uh, for now. <clears throat> okay, good. Might have been just an attribute of where I was and when it was. So we, we have Dave. Not seeing any window just not wide enough to see. There it is to see microphone indicator. Yeah. Everyone's on everyone's on mute. Good morning. Honest, this is Hank. Uh, your microphone. Is a tad bit uh, straining, so I'm I'm struggling to hear you and understand you well. I'm trying. Okay, all right. Well, so when it's you can't hear me because it's not good, or there's just too much background. Now it's suddenly better. So if you're talking well, so to speak, uh, it is basically drowning out in the background. Okay, I'll keep it on mute for sure. <clears throat> it, <clears throat> it's having that push to talk kind of. Uh thing no yeah. the, the one that i have coming is a, has a has a better noise isolation and uh but it also doesn't pack very well so i put it in a box of other crap that exit uh hi michael i think uh, from my side I, I i i hear your voice is not stable uh sometimes it's good sometimes it's not good All right, should we start? I'm sharing, I hope, the list of issues. Yep, we see it. And uh, Dave, I merged your, your uh, the pull request that just had the diagram. Uh, maybe we don't like it, but I thought we might as well merge it and then, and then complain about it. Um, I don't know where it's gonna go. Yeah, maybe uh, that's the... Uh... ASCII version of Ned's diagram. And so merging it for anybody else just means that there's a separate text file that's not included anywhere from the markdown. Yeah, exactly. That's why I realized it had no effect on merging or not. That's why I just said, let's just do it and get it over here. And we can fix it if we don't like it. Um, this one has an X on it. Change the arrow because it doesn't merge anymore. I, I improved um, this one. I don't know what the failing check is. Uh, probably one approved, one pending reviewer. If there's no conflict, we can merge it. Um, what was this doing? This is changing the... This is the one that you edited live during last meeting. Yeah. So do we want to merge that to start with? So... Um, we had some comments okay. about had had some comments about this, um, and because we, well, actually, oh, that's not even the right one. Did remove claim term. Oh, there we removed the claim term. Remove it from the diagram. So we actually removed this box claims collector completely. And the place we, we put the word collecting claims at the bottom and put the testing environment. So we had some comments and you have a pull request. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge this one. And then we need to, um, maybe we can go to Way's uh, pull request that I think did this morning. here. So um, so you want to go into this now? 
basically, I think there was a t paragraph that we removed last week that we would like to retain. Maybe said that um, this was the increase in security. Yeah, I don't think this is a paragraph that we removed. This is something that uh, Way is adding. And I'm saying uh, that didn't make sense to me. And his response tells me that it needs to be reworded. Okay. Because, uh, and way I see you're on. You can you can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think that uh, uh, I'll wait for Michael to pull it back up on the screen. But um, uh, the wording was something like before receiving the evidence from the other attesters. And in the back and forth comments you and I had, the order that you receive the evidence in is not important. I thought what you were talking about is um, uh, about receiving appraisal policy and endorsements or something. And so you can see line 215 talks about before receiving. And I think that's the part that um, everything from before up to the comma, sorry, up to the to increase the security comma. Um, is the part that didn't make sense to me, and so I'm still confused. I get what your point is down below, although uh, in your response, but um, let's see. Michael, can you expand upwards so we can see a couple lines above 212? Let's push the, uh, on the left. There's a little up arrow uh, right above the 212, uh, down right above the number 212. Yeah, that one. Um, so the parenthetical statement in 209 to 210 is the one that talks about uh, using endorsements and appraisal policies obtained the same way as any other verifier. Um, I think that's what you're talking about, Way, is the endorsements and appraisal policies are obtained the same way as any other verifier, and that's your, in the same case, the lead tester has an internal verifier and so on. So I think you're talking about that part, if I'm understanding your point correctly. Yeah, yes. Uh, and and uh, I'd like to uh, first uh, uh, say that uh, this sentence is um, uh, previously in my uh, PR, and okay. uh, uh, last week Dave, your PR has re uh, removed, okay. deleted this sentence, so I added it back. Got it. And Got it. Uh, yeah, I, yes, I I just want to say the the case that the leader tester has an internal verify, and uh, it has to be trusted. To receive the uh, endorsements and the appraisal uh, policy, so uh, this sentence uh, I added. But it, um, uh, I hope you can understand my uh, purpose. But the uh, the word the sentence is not very like okay. you know. <clears throat> so there's two there's two there's two scenarios: one where there is a verifier, and one where there isn't. I don't think that's this clear. This is talking about the relationship between the endorser and the verifier. And since there's no verifier in the picture, this is just in text, right? And by the verifier, meaning the internal verifier, right? So he's saying that in order to get, if you have a verifier, in order to get appraisal policy, for example, into the internal verifier, there has to be trust between the, what you call it, the verifier owner or something like that? Yeah, verifier owner. I'm looking at your response, right? You call it the verifier owner. There has to be trust between that and the internal verifier. And uh, the parenthetical part is, yeah, that's the same as for any other verifier. There's nothing special here. So I don't I disagree with you, but it's not the point that we're calling out here. Everything that's true for a regular verifier is true there too. Right. So the section that talks about verifiers would say this already. So does it need to be here? That's why I originally removed it. Is Ned's point, but yeah. I don't disagree with with uh, Way's point, but that that's why it was. It seemed uh, anomalous to repeat it in the section, as Ned's saying. Yeah. <clears throat> so th it's only a question of if it's unique to this particular case of a embedded internal verifier in in the context uh, of no. a composite. No, uh... Uh, in this case, I just uh, compare the internal verifier uh, as a remote verifier. So okay. I added this sentence. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm with uh, Dave Thaler that it, the verify the section on verifiers should describe verifiers, and if there is an in, uh, if there is an internal verifier, it follows the same rules as any other verifier. 
Okay, so maybe that's uh, what we should say. It should say that. I mean, that's what the goal is, I think. If there's an internal verifier, it is following the same rules as other verifiers. That's the point of the parenthetical statement in 209 to 210. Feel free to wordsmith, but that's exactly what that parenthesis is supposed to mean, is what you just said, Michael. So this is Hank. I am fine with spelling out that the verifier should do the exact same thing, but we have to all take, we all be aware of it, that um, that would include a lot of burden I always like to call it the burden of appraisal. Um, so um, the burden of appraisal is hard. So if we allow a, a composite device verifier to uh, conduct a complete um, verifier appraisal um, procedure, it will take a lot of effort. It is way less, um, let's call it um, concise or simplified to do the, uh, um, to do a, um, and if we haven't talked about this here, I know it's an outstanding term, maybe I'm confusing people, but there's a thing about uh, you can, can, can convey the health or the, the current operational state of an attached server with a single um, value. Th that's a thing. Um, so so that, that's, that's a, with a very deterministically uh, composed uh, attestors. And, and supposedly, I assume in a com composite device that in the hierarchy of attestors, at, at, the, at the bottom of the tree, the leaves, there will be uh, uh, more simplicity because they are smaller. And so uh, uh, appraisal always means to have this uh, uh, appraisal policies. And maybe they're very small, maybe they're very big. So there's a spectrum here. And I think we have to spell that out because if we have to uh, uh, say that the uh, per, uh, verifier on a, on a composite device route is, has the same capabilities as every uh, verifier. We, we burden it with the uh, complexity of, of, of big, big uh, uh, undeterministic uh, appraisal procedures. And that's something we have to spell out because that's, that's something some people don't want, I think. Right, and the, <clears throat> the result of that is attestation results. And I think that if we blur the, if we sort of muddy the line between what an attester the, the line between collection and verification, we get we get into this weird space where we lose we lose track that hey, it's actually ver um, attestation results that's coming out as opposed to a composite something or other. And that's what I'm concerned about in this section where we where we're trying to assert that that there's a verifier, <clears throat> but we don't call it out as a verifier. We don't. We don't list verifier and we don't show the attestation results that normally come from a verifier. And therefore, the thing that gets returned by the composite attester is <clears throat> something we're, we're giving it a new name. It, it really should just be uh, evidence and attestation results, which we've Sorry. already defined. I thought one of the things that we had a day discussion about was. Uh... Oh, am I muted? No. Making sure you can hear me. Um, yeah. Was the difference between attestation results and evidence may not be a strict line between them? In other words, if you're using, say, an EAT for both formats, then the only difference may be whether it has a specific claim in it or not, for example. So in other words, what, 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 what it composes as an attestation result, the receiver might treat as evidence, for example. Right, but the, the the semantics are what's important, and so we need to know that even if it is an eat and it has a a claim an eat defined claim, it's still a result of a verifier which has processed some policy, and so there's some decision was made based on policy, and the the next the next verifier in line somehow has to connect the dots and saying oh. This other verifier, which I trust to do to verify things on my behalf, is the one is the verifier that did that, and I trust. It, it's not really relevant, you know. The fact that it's an eat is sort of not that important. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, the the eat is the transport, and it should be as simple as possible to take on Lawrence's head here. <laughs> Sorry, and um, but still. Um, the decision or the process or procedure, whatever you want to call it, behind the creation can differ. So uh, having included a, um, let's think about it, um, a, uh, um, 
a present policy is something worthwhile to note in the resulting output. And if the output becomes the content of evidence, yes, in each it's the same structure, but still maybe we need a indicator here to highlight this is the output of a very vast or complex appraisal policy than you can imagine. It's not just some claim collected. So that, that's the important thing here, I suppose, because without that, you cannot ever uh, estimate the, the relevance or the, the complexity of, of the procedure behind it, and therefore never ever be able to uh, infer trustworthiness. So uh, I assume that some small hint here does not hurt. I'm not sure yet whether I agree with that. So um, I think that a lot of what you said, Hank, is a very big statement, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be said. Um, I, I think that the point is to, to make this it's clear that this is a there. Um, I wanted to kind of follow up. I think it was a way that this was some of the text that you felt was gone here in the pink here. This was in the pull request from last week. Um, so we actually do have inside the this sentence, inside the later testimony optional verifier, actually that that actually wound up again elsewhere, um, further down. This is the other situation, the attachment claim specter has an internal verifier. So I think we moved that around, and maybe the, some of the paragraphs that you thought went away didn't go away as much as they did. I'm not kind of, the actual, sorry. Oh, I'm here, I'm uh, feeding off from myself, some somebody. I'm just talking. Okay, so I do not uh, contest the structure of this text. Because it's starting with a quite simple scenario and then goes into the composite scenario. And now you'll switch the view. Um, but, but there were two paragraphs. Yeah, no, yeah the, the 2080 or 20 something uh, paragraphs, the small paragraph above is about the simple scenario. And the 207 paragraph below is about the more complex scenario. And I think that's a good way to phrase this. So going from small to complex. So that's, that's I think there's a philosophical question is whether or not a composite attester should include a verifier. If we can define it in a way that it doesn't include the verifier, that simplifies things quite a bit. I, I think that, that instead of the word should, I think the word is you want it can. Because I think we agree that a composite of tester that does not include a verifier is a valid architecture, right? You just send evidence to the to the primary verifier. I can use that term. Right. right. So right. in the case in the case where we say that it does include a verifier, is that any different from um, any other scenario where you have a verifier that's feeding? I mean, it's not really. The question is. <clears throat> The composite attester isn't attesting to the verifier's result because the verifier is attesting is is asserting it, it's on its own accord that it it did this verification and produced this result. The 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 composite attester is not taking over the role of a verifier of the of the other verifier. It's just it's like they're separate things and they should stay separate and we shouldn't confuse them. So I think if we can define composite attester as something that is only an attester, <clears throat> we'd be better off. How do you want me to capture that thought? Um, I like the idea that we have composite evidence and that a, a tester can build composite evidence. I don't think we have to necessarily call it a composite attester. I had put up some text for composite evidence, and maybe I didn't actually commit it because I don't see it here. Yeah, the the diagram the diagram is kind of confusing because it has composite attester around a big box, and then inside it talks about an attester or an attesting environment. I like the idea of composite evidence. I don't know if we need a composite attester. I I agree with you. I think composite evidence makes more sense than not. But the di the diagram just. I can't see the diagram, so I don't know what we ended up with, but <clears throat> it's uh, you can if we we can it's like the it's okay to have like a section heading that 
that's sort of, you know, the composite attester section, and we describe how to generate composite evidence, whether or not the diagram includes the word composite attester or just a tester. Um, fine. I mean, I don't know. I would be fine with Eric and Ned's suggestion to not use the term composite attester, meaning I'm okay either way, but I kind of, uh, I kind of agree with uh, Eric's thought here. Yeah, I did put some text for compositive, composite evidence in about 10 days ago, but it looks like I didn't commit it right. So I'll, I'll do it right next time. That I think the the assertion that's being made in composite evidence is the assembling of multiple evidence flows that are already protected, but that they went that they sort of went through this choke point in the in the topology, and maybe that's important information. Maybe not. I don't know, but. I don't, I don't think it should be confused with verifier. I'm still not quite sure. I think that this pull request needs some edit days and then we need to figure it out. Um, what this other question about composite tester? You wanted the diagram. It's like if we get the diagram right first, then add text. That makes more sense as you're describing the diagram. But we started out with so that's the diagram that we wound up with last time. We have evidence of composite tester, which is actually the term that I asked. To see. I guess we need to find that term we have the so, evidence of so i think eric's suggestion was the outside box is labeled composite attester oh it is yes it is right if we remove that label and then the arrow coming out of the top of it is this ju is just then evidence instead of evidence of a composite attester uh, up at the top because there's no composite attester term or even just composite evidence that yeah that's fine too i almost don't even need that outer box um, I think in Wei's example, it, I, I don't have a problem with the outer box just because I think in the examples, the outer box is a physical enclosure of some sort. And we could call it device or something like that. Yeah. Like in your uh, multi-chassis router and your, uh, what, what was the, the example above that was something about it. It's like a, it's the router enclosure, for example. Uh, this is Hank. I'm, 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 I'm sounding like a, a broken record, but I assume that we need to the bucket to put things into it, like this outer box a name so we had a lot of names and we had actors entities and um, principals and uh, uh, maybe maybe it's still a good thing so i'm just highlighting this again because i like it <laughs> um uh, i like the bottom line there using the term device i forget who suggested that eric or somebody <laughs> meaning the outside box where right now it says a tester where it used to say composite tester and so I think using device yeah. there is good right so i guess the question is do, do we want are we in the is this diagram showing roles or is it showing roles and entities together if it's if, if we want to be i don't know what it's strict it is. about it's roles, showing roles defined early in the document yeah so i mean if we look at the roles section it's an attester you know Evidence comes from a tester and goes into a verifier. That's what we said. Yep. And at that that level of decomposition, that should that would argue that the device should be a tester. And then inside of an attester, we have the notion of a testing environments and target environments. In which case, we could describe lead a tester A as a testing environment A, and a testing environment. B and C, and that, and that creates this sort of interesting notion of a composite scenario where you're producing composite evidence because you have multiple attesting environments in the same attester. And th that, 
that allows you to have the conversation in the context of roles and not mixing it with other other concepts like uh, entities and devices. And it's not incorrect to to say device, but <clears throat> it's just uh, how how much of a purist are you in? Reason it'd be incorrect to say device and like a tester better is you can have an external verifier as part of a passport model providing some positive evidence in. So I think the device limits you to on box, whereas you couldn't get stuff off box and, and bring it together. So I love the role idea, and I do think that uh, that some of the feeds into the testing environment come and come from external places like off box verifiers. Eric, can you put your mic closer to your mouth? Sorry about that. Um, I'm just saying that uh, you're, you can have a verifier as a tester B in this diagram, and that verifier can, can come from off box. But I think that's not the same as it B being in a tester because an, an a tester is going to produce evidence and a verifier is going to produce attestation results. Those are different things. We had this discussion already. So this yeah. verifier component on the attester has not really be on the attester. I think, as Michael pointed out last week, um, so um, there could be a, a outreach to a uh, um, remote attestation servers or something like that, and then you, the attester gets the result back, and it would be the same thing as if the uh, uh, verifier would be local. But it would be a different verifier. It effectively now in this diagram communicates its evidence, including attestation result too. So, so now uh, it, it would be a a, a remote uh, interaction, but it would be uh, um, transparent to the verifier in this diagram. Exactly. Sorry, opaque. Sorry, I think the word I'm looking for is opaque. Sorry. So. So I'm, I don't I don't have a strong opinion about whether it's device or a tester, but I I, I think I'd prefer a tester, <clears throat> just to make it you know for purity reasons, and then the the I don't think you even need to lead a tester a because the attesting environment is also the same as a tester a. You can just say it's a testing environment A. And the relationship between a tester B and C in a testing environment A is different from the claims collection from a target environment because the the claims that the the evi because it's receiving evidence as opposed to uh, claims. I guess we're using the term claim to refer to. I think the reason why we have the word lead is because it used that in the text and way used it as the text. Um, that's why it's in the diagram. Um, it, it has involved A just to give it a, a we can see the different pieces, but. Yeah, I mean, it's the introduced terminology to, to help to make the text more clear, but <clears throat> I don't think, I mean, you could, you could draw the diagram in such a way that you have a target environment feeding a lead a tester A and not have a bounding box around the two. It's it's just it's just it's just I would like to keep it. I don't mind. I don't care about I, I we've gone so we went from composite a tester to a tester to device to a tester. Is that is that the conclusion no. here? Let's let's, no, let's no, finish that conversation first, okay? I'm having the I'm having the I'm having the conversation of the lead a tester A box. I know. I'm just yeah. trying to finish the last conversation before we okay. get too far into that. Is, is it? Are we happy with leaving it as as a tester at this point? I haven't decided yeah. yet. I'm trying to figure out what people are saying. So, okay. Do Do you want me to make this a pull request or just commit it? Uh, pull request. Here we have a tester is inside a testers, right? In the diagram as it stands, right? So a tester B is inside a tester. I think in uh, Way's first diagram, I think he had like sub a tester or something. We didn't like that, but now that we have a tester inside of a tester, it may be confusing. 
Uh, <clears throat> right. So I, th I, th I, this is why I'm. <laughs> I sort of think it makes sense to remove that outer box. But. Right, because I was interpreting <clears throat> the outer box as being the uh, what is physically local versus physically remote. Like the verifier on the top is a remote verifier, right? Everything else is is you know local, like different chassis or there, you know cards inside the same physical device connected by, you know, cables and so on. That's the, you know, via internal links or network connections, the parenthetical stuff in the middle there, the word internal, it's internal to what? Well, it's internal to that outer box. That is true. So if that is the only difference we could maybe, I think I have seen this in TCG. Uh, I have to look it up again. Um, I think TCG uh, um, somehow differentiates between local and remote conveyance. So this would be the difference here. So that we can remove the outer box and just say that this conveyance to the verifier can be local or remote, and then we're done with it. Would that, be, would that help? If I, find I think that we're trying to we're trying to uh, describe the scenario of how compo something that's a composite device or a composite thing, right? It's it's this whole notion of composite. So we have to define what that means. And I think it only makes sense in the context of a, com a, a composite device that consists of multiple attesting environments. So it probably makes sense to create that that to, to that context. And so actually, I'm going to reverse my opinion and say I think it should say device or composite device and not a tester, because we already have we have. We have the whole idea is there's multiple attesters or multiple attesting environments inside the same box, and so we need to draw a circle around the box. Yeah, this would also help the uh, layered attesting uh, um, association scenario, I assume. So have this physical bound conglomerate of attesters, I think, helps. Also, device, I think, is more in line with EAT. Uh, I, agree uh, with with what, yeah. I agree with Ned's logic here. I, I I followed what you were saying, Ned, and that made sense to me what you said. So I have one question on that, and that is, what would happen if you do have a verifier that provides part of the evidence to the investing environments? What happens if you have something that is inserting other information that goes to a verifier? Is that disallowed by this picture then? Um, I think. This picture doesn't necessarily disallow it per se, but the one word on the picture that might be a problem if you were to do that. So, Eric, if I understand right, uh, one of your examples would be, let's look at, say, a tester B, and there's the line that comes out to the left, right? Well, let's pretend in one of your examples that a tester B is following the passport model. So, if tester B goes off to some remote verifier not shown, gets back an attestation result and the thing that points over to the left out of a tester b is the attestation result he got back from the remote tester from the from, the, from his own remote verifier right and so the word that's problematic is underneath those three lines it says evidence of a testers right now maybe that's the same problem as we had with the composite evidence concluding an attestation result coming out the top but uh i don't think it's disallowed i think there's a different nuance here is what we mean by evidence of a testers so we also have it via internal links or network connections. So the device. Eric, did that describe your case correctly, first of all? Absolutely. It, it definitely does. And also when we say device, identify or network connections, whether those network connections are a composite device or what's the definite definition of device. I certainly want to have a verifier be able to provide information to a testing environment. And here we're saying the there's an external verifier that might be, you know, B's external verifier doesn't communicate directly with the testing environment. An example that I gave, which I think is the one that you have in mind, is a tester B is the only one that knows about the remote verifier. That's the passport model. He goes off, gets back an attestation result, and then supplies that across the internal link. So, so, so Dave, I think what you're saying is the thing, the information that can come out of an attester is evidence or attestation results because of passport model, but I don't know that we need that complexity in this diagram because yeah, I agree. in the passport I, model diagram. Well, this you're, No, this goes back to what I was saying earlier in the call, which is if you look at, uh, I'm gonna give the analogy of the composite evidence line, right? So 
even if the composite evidence line includes something that um, what that the sender included as an attestation result, the receiver is a verifier. Right? The verifier receives evidence. So he's going to get a set of claims that may include claims that would normally appear in an attestation result, and he's going to treat it the same way as evidence, which is he's going to run the appraisal policy for evidence over that lot. That point is saying the receiver treats it as evidence. Now, if we look at the line coming out of B, evidence of attesters, it's the same, right? The attesting environment is going to treat it as evidence to go in that composite evidence. The fact that attester B got it from a verifier and it may include some things that would appear in attestation results is just a matter of uh, detail, right? And so uh, I agree with you, and that's why. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think, I think I'm with Dave on this one. Uh, the only thing is that uh, I still prefer the auto box to be in buckets, so uh, device, but I heard a lot of uh, voices that say, um, a tester is also fine because a testers are nested in the testers, so that does does make sense. Yeah. I'm, so I'm the, reason, the, the reason that I like device now that you're talking about that, either device or composite device, which is how it's on the screen right now, is if you look at the line that goes all the way up to the top to the remote verifier, the line does not come from the device box. It comes all the way down into the uh, testing environment box. So that means that whatever the label is in the outer one, the outer one is not the thing that sends the composite evidence. That's the inner box. So it doesn't need to be a tester. It's the leader tester is the thing that's composing the full evidence. And that one, the, the one that's leader tester A is the one that has to have their term of tester on it, not the device. Oh, so sorry. Um, I, I created my own feedback, by the way. I have to do it the right way, so I'm sorry. I created this last time. Um, so this either mean that we do not need the outer box, which are outer also here. Or, but, but, but the outer box was important to illustrate in the example of you know the multi chassis yeah. router or whatever to help people understand that this is what's internal versus external. Yeah, I think okay, so. I don't want to write one thing. So, so, so Eric, you were like. I think you were like an advocate of being the outer box being a tester. So what is your main argument against it being a device? Let's I would like can we like put this on hold for the moment because I think that okay. we should go on to some other things. So you can uh, also do this. Uh, uh, I have to uh, capture this uh, thought, I think. Yeah. So uh what's the number of this diagram? Does it have a number? Figure 2. Yeah. Can I just answer that question and then I'll move on because I think I have one thing to contribute to it. Go ahead. A tester B, a tester C, or verifier, the reason these things are different is that you're able to differentiate them in the composite evidence. In other words, they all have some private key which is going to ass assign their evidence. So my major consideration is being able to identify assembled bits of, of evidence which can be assigned to a particular originating attester. And as long as we cover that, I'm, I'm happy. I think the major thing here is the composite evidence always is going to include items that can be associated with a subsystem, and that subsystem being a tester B, a tester C, or a verifier. And so that's my ultimate goal, is ensuring that we can Ensure in the composite evidence, the originator of that evidence. So I propose that we come back to this conversation um, about this and we put some arguments in figure two there. Um, I'd like to go on to some of the other. Uh, just the, the next question is, do, uh, is can, could we change the diagram? Could we accept this pull request as it is now? Uh, or do I'm we? Let, uh, I'm in yeah. favor of composite device more than device okay make that issue point, point in the issue but okay. but for the moment are you happy with the update uh, the other depth updates we did to the diagram uh, uh, this is the, actually yeah. no i am not because it okay. uh, kind of so, uh, biases the decision so we should have at least a a, a device slash attester slash composite attester so, at the bottom to highlight the conflict we have right now Okay, so I, like the, I like it the way that you have it, except for I do prefer composite device over device. But to your point, Michael, I would be fine with merging it and dealing with that in addition to the merge as opposed to before the merge. But I do agree that I like composite device better than device. I'll take Hank's point and, and put all, all, all of them in the diagram. So it was device, composite, 
device, a tester. What what else? That's fine, I think. I don't want. I, I don't agree that they belong in the diagram. I think it's fine to put them in the issue you filed, and we can discuss it. But I don't believe that the outer box has it or needs should have the word of tester in it. And that's not the I point. Always, the point was I was trying I to the diagram. That which everybody read the master uh, thinks this is a decision. People do not read issues; they read the master properly. Yeah. So, so the point was just to highlight the fact that this is an, an issue. That's all. That's all. Uh, the point was, Dave. Is that okay with you, Dave? That we we highlight that point. Sorry, I did not understand the question. I, I I see what's on the screen, and what's on the screen looks fine, but I didn't understand what question you're asking. So, so the point was that in the di in the diagram that we're going to merge to master, mm -hmm. we would um, where did I where did it go? Um, that it would. Uh, say it would it would acknowledge the conflict that we ha we're having. You're going to put uh, like a a to do or something into the diagram yes. itself. Yes. Uh, depending on how it reads, I have no problem with that in theory. Okay, it reads. Pushed it. Come on, ready to go. There we go. That's what it reads now. Okay with that, Dave? Uh, I, I'm thinking. I'm okay enough with it. That's so I'd say, yeah, go on. I mean, I could nitpick, but it's not worth it, so. Okay. So I want to get back to... Um, other pull requests. So there was one big one from you, Dave. Here we have what, 15 minutes left. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have some comments to it that I put today that you probably haven't had a chance to read. I then. briefly did. Now uh, I will point out that almost all of the text in this one here was in uh, the source draft. Mo uh, I think almost all of it came from uh, mine. Um, since people said tend to, that they tend to understand it, so I, I use that as my primary one. I, mean, I made I, terminology changes, and so I'm guessing a lot of your questions also appear, apply to the original uh, draft failure arc doc. I they probably too. I would say that my comments are uh, not not meant. They're not. I'm not. Whole, I I don't think you have to change anything. I, I think I it just raises issues that maybe I should open open, open issues instead. Yeah. Um, so let's walk through them. If we got time, then uh, yeah, why don't you draw? Why don't you lead us through your comments? And we'll see if other people agree with them or whatever. I, I briefly skimmed them, and so, well, so. So you said a bunch of stuff. I'll put the whole comments on the screen in a moment if you like. You briefly said about how the you know so you could take that the uh, that you know even just knowing what the device was might be enough for some uh, people, some some uh, relying parties. I think was where where we were to to make an authorization decision, and um, it just seemed like to me that you were using a lot of words to say that um, appraisal is a key part of authorization, but not the whole so story. There are local controls. So I wasn't quite sure why it took so many I words to say that. I think is what it was. I. I I suspect you're right. I'd have to redo it again, but I suspect offhand that uh, you are correct. And again, I was trying to not make changes significantly in this, as in other words, okay. field text as much as possible. If you'd like to propose a change, feel free, but I was uh, not trying to rewrite paragraphs unless I had to. The only things that I tried to rewrite are things that were the, where we changed terminology based on these meetings. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'll go. So, I was so open cannot... to simplification. I, I okay, so I, I and, and sometimes you have to hit people over the head and so this is allowed. Yes, we didn't say it's forbidden. It is allowed because they don't they don't listen to that part. Um, so I'm still I'm still uncomfortable with the word remediation uh, in uh, the way that the TEEP uses it um, because I it feels like in the TEEP case to be remediated means to be upgraded and um, that in the case of you know full of mal malware that's not not necessarily the remediate exactly what you want, but um, this one is worth discussing, perhaps. Um, 
to me, uh, remediation is to bring back into compliance. And so if you are out of compliance, then that's a problem and you have to remedy that. Whatever you have to do to remedy that is whatever remediation is. And that's independent of whether it's a TEE or not, right? That's just the generic to remedy the fact that you're out of compliance is to bring yourself back into compliance. That's it. Nothing more. But is, is that flow part of RATS? Um, no, it's part of T. A use yeah. case is, this is you hey, have to know that you're out of compliance in order to become... trigger remediation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This, this trigger is this maybe the, the the thing we're leaving off, and 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 we are we are, we are providing to the the uh, uh, post process here. But as we have uh, um, established that Reds is going to phases, so to speak. Sorry, um, it might become at some point a conversion point to deep, and we have to think about that um, proactively. I think so. We cannot we cannot cannot write text that totally inhibits this. We have to leave open stubs that, 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 that are interfaces like, like to the other uh, solutions. And at the moment, the other, a single other solution might be TEEP. And that is okay for me, I think. And still we have to yeah. say, but Dave just elaborately expressed. <laughs> Sorry. Dave. So if you look at line 461, it doesn't actually say you do remediation. It's just saying that if you fail attestation results, you may be in need of remediation. It makes no statement as to how you do remediation. So whether it's TEEP or anything else, it's just saying you're out of compliance. You got to remedy that, and it doesn't make any statements about that. So it's a negative statement about remediation. Or sorry, it's the absence of a statement about remediation. It's just you need remediation of some sort. Right. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an example. It's a, it's a for example. Go ahead, Michael. I think that, that that because the term um, in this context shows up from T, I'm getting polluted by that term. And because of that, I'm asking actually the question is, um, actually, I would be happy if we put the word remediation in the architecture document and we then said remediation is out of scope. Just so that nobody comes to this and thinks that it's always the T uh, meaning. That's really my so my discomfort. Okay. Yeah, all, there is no not, intent here to constrain no this to the term remediation. So so TEEP uses the term remediation. It's not invented by TEEP. So that's I know that's the case. Right. I'm the same exactly. paragraph here would be identity. It would still be exactly true if there is no TEE. You're just using this about the uh, REE or there's no distinction. Right. It's just your your device. Right. It's your regular OS. Your uh, you know, your UFI and Linux or whatever, your native remediation. There's nothing TEEP specific about this paragraph. Absolutely. I totally got that. The point I was trying to say is that I was just, I felt uncomfortable um, that uh, that the word might get watered down for people that have only seen TEEP. That's what I'm worried about. Okay. So I think that remediation in many cases, it's a big, it's a big, like, oh my goodness, something terrible has happened. This is a big problem. Right. Um, so um, I don't want to I don't want that word to be, you know, oh, it's just a bit of remediation. No problem. Right. You know, you know. Yeah, but you don't have to put it out of scope and just highlight what Dave just said. You're out of compliance. And you have to count. Well, that would be enough. The, the, uh, and, and remediation is one the device is out of compliance. Mechanisms to put it within to make it comply or outside of the scope of, of this article. In our in our model, the relying party is making the decision whether or not the attester is trustworthy. Yes. If we use words like authorized or out of compliance or whatever, it's it's somebody else's vocabulary. We we only care about trust or trustworthiness, and that's the result. It's either trustworthy or it's not trustworthy. Okay. So I think to listen to this, Michael, I'm gonna make a proposal, Michael. Would you be okay if, and maybe in need of remediation, if we just deleted that phrase? That actually, I think would be okay. Um, I would be fine with that. And and it might be based on what Ned just said, that the word treated as authorized actually might be, should say, to be treated as trustworthy. Uh, no, that's not that the That may be wrong. That, yeah. That's wrong in the point of this paragraph. The point of this paragraph is that a relying party it's going to have to do something with a result, you know, grant access to a resource, whatever it is. It's going to have to do something. It has to make an authorization decision, and trustworthiness is an input into that decision. But at the end of the day, it's going to have to make some decision. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I yeah. There's a line in the middle of the relying party where you where you go from trustworthiness 
to the rest of what the, uh, the relying party is doing, which is an application specific context, which is out of scope for rats. We're really, when rats talks about relying party, it's only talking about the first half of the relying party, not the second half of the relying party. Yeah, that is true. So the, 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 the responsibility of rats, so to speak, is I think is to provide believable or trustworthy evidence. And whatever you do with it with the relying party, that's the other half of the relying party, is up to you. So you can disregard all of that or you can take it into account. That's up to you. That's not the scope of rats. Yeah, I agree with what you said. Uh, and I see Michael's looking around. I don't know if that needs I'm it. Trying text to, I'm trying to put the stuff in more in context, as you just said. To, to get scroll down, I think. I'm just trying to figure out what why what the two different what the two look, views are and how they differ. And I got it now. Um, so I think it's easier to look at this because it gives us more uh, uh, um, context. Um, so I, I'm happy with what your proposal put the put the period before at, after authorized. Um, I think Ned, if that you'll find that that other parts about what there are up here in in this. Uh, uh, there, I think that it's up here. Right. So I, I need to I need to read more of this in context, but just yeah, I think that's based, right. based on that one paragraph, I I think there's a, a a line between trustworthiness and other words that are that that like authorized and so forth that I think is stepping over the boundary of of rat scope and whether we want to sort of go to that look. No, I think I, I think he's actually I think he's actually done the right thing because I think that walking it through and that was part of my complaint about using so many words is that kind of beating people over the head. This is your 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 you're the relying party. You can do whatever you want, and he kind of beats people over the head with that. You can do X or Y or Z. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the job of the architecture document to explain how rats fits into the larger picture. Yeah, and I think that's okay. You can't you can't scoop the architecture document to just rats. So you can't tell how it fits into anything that's usable. So you actually have to show how rats relates to larger context, and that's the point. And I, um, I'm not philosophically opposed to that, but I, and as long as we are, as long as we sort of understand that there is this sort of line where where rats is not trying to define what authorization means or what whatever whatever other term we want to come up with yeah so this is the paragraph that starts in 464 that uh, the one that just got scrolled off the bottom of the screen um is the one that talks about the relationship between you know once you decide something is trustworthy then you can do the rest of the authorization decision right that's what that paragraph yeah. is talking about yeah okay and so that's why i was thinking about your point about whether previous paragraph where it says the attester should not be treated as authorized and maybe in need of remediation. And I said, let's just delete and maybe in need of remediation because I don't think it changes the point of that paragraph. Um, and you'd ask whether authorized should be trustworthy or something like that. And I would say terminology wise, an attester is authorized, the claims are treated as trustworthy. And so I yes. think it's correct as phrased, but if you had to change it to be trustworthy, you'd say that the attester's claims should not be treated as trustworthy. Um, and that would, I think, have the same meaning. And I'm okay either way, but I think it's not incorrect as is. Yeah, I just need to read the, the whole thing in context, and I haven't had a chance to do that. Let me let me go forward. So the next point I'm going to, uh, I probably have to use too many words. I realized reading this, I look, you know, um, the date of birth on your passport or your driver's license, um, actually, maybe it may be part of, if you look, think, think about how it's used. Right, it's used differently by different parties. Um, I think, yeah, no, I, your your point here is that it can be used as evidence of age, even though it's actually about date of birth, right? The reader can do a computation, compute age, and use it for an age-based thing, like another over twenty-one. Right? Uh, yes, but I I believe I that exactly the same thing can apply to any other claim. So let's say the point. I'm not I'm not arguing about the computationally about the about what both the age versus that. What I'm actually asking is that the bartender at the bar wants to know, can you drink? And the evidence, the evidence he uses for can you drink is your, your date of birth, okay? And the, uh, um, the attesting party, excuse me, the verifier for that is the government agency that produced the passport. Correct. Okay? 
they in fact are attesting to your age. Yep. Okay. But when I go to the border, they don't care about my age. What they they use the age in that passport to verify if they're to help them verify whether they're looking at the uh, a uh, the correct person or not. Not just my picture, but also am I the right set a gender and do I have the right age? They actually use it to verify to match my passport to my person, right? And so actually the fact that that age is put in there is not necessarily for the bartender's benefit. And I think that there, there's some, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that that, that particular uh, uh, thing, I'm not sure whether it's evidence or result is what I'm trying to say. Well, or have a problem with, with the example than I am. Well, so, well, I'm a little confused. A passport or a driver's license. This is about an attestation result. I'm a little confused because the passport says date of birth, not age. Ignore that. Ignore that. The the the, the, the liquor law, the liquor licensing law, could say instead of you be 21, it could say you were born before 1990. Right. 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 That, that's 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 just math. You can just move the move move the 21 to their side of the equation. Right. Right. But the, right the, that. the date of birth is the evidence. The verifier is trying to apply a policy, which is, can you drink? And no, the relying party is applying that, not the verifier. The party is applying that. And it's going to have to convert date of birth into an age in order to compare it to the policy of uh, so, age-based so, so drinking laws. The, 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 the bartender starts with the picture, compares me to the picture, and then based upon the this, this attestation um, gets some evidence about my date of birth out of it. They get an attestation result about that date of birth. Yes, right. And it comes from a government entity in there. Good. Okay. Yep. When I get to the border, the custom, the immigration officer doesn't care whether I'm old enough. What they care about is do I look like I'm the age in my passport? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So they actually use that as part of an, it's actually an endorsement. It's not an, it's not an attestation result. It's part of the endorsement. I, I have a beard. I look like I, my gender is probably male and that helps them match me to my picture. I wouldn't call that an endorsement. The way that I would treat this is in both cases, meaning both the uh, bar and the border, there is an appraisal policy for attestation results. Okay. And the appraisal policy at the, uh, bar, it's against, it's a comparison against a known good value. You know, this is a greater than or less than 21. Okay. Right. At the border, it's not comparing it against a strict value. It's comparing it against a value that's obtained dynamically based on, say, your, uh, you know, the, the, the camera or the person's view of what they think your age is. And so it's a comparison against an external piece of data. In both cases, it's a comparison. It's still appraisal policy, which is go ahead and compare the value of this claim against foo, where foo is either a hard-coded number or it's something obtained dynamically. That's the difference in those two cases. Fair enough. So I'm just going to read my comment. I think we should continue on. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so um, I think you go. Just I think you want to go a little bit further there, right? You that. We, that if the verifier has a way to generate vendor agnostic information based on evaluating vendor specific information and evidence, I think that I think that we want to say that this is a major motivation yep. for this. Okay, and I just think that the I think that our, that in the architecture, I think we should actually be a little more aspirational than that um, here. Uh, sure. If you'd like to suggest a particular sentence, that sounds fine to me. I will suggest it in a subsequent pull request. That was the all. I, 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 I suspect you could do that in 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 one decently long sentence. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that was my comment here. Um, and last thing here. Uh, ah, so that one. Uh, yeah, I yeah. should really comment to here. So this is one we actually discussed in the working group like two meetings ago, which was, um, and I was the proponent for uh, who the that. RATS defines the uh, criteria for creating new claims, 
but the rats is not responsible for creating the complete set of claims. Other claims could be created by other working groups or even by external entities like, you know, OPC or whatever else, right? Uh, it's not and like the analogy that. was, it's exactly the same answer as for DHC options, for example. I, it's not my question. Sensibility feature, right? So the architecture tells you, we have a, a core building block set for you, but you can create your own. Is that correct? That's not my question. I thought you were asking who creates X509 certificate extensions. And the uh, answer I am asking that, but I don't think that I don't think that I'm. Those are claims. I think that that our eats or other things live within these extensions, and that the claims live within those eats. Uh, no, that I disagree with, because that requires you to have a CWT parser in something that only has X509. I agree, you could do that. I, okay. I don't disagree that that is legal. That is actually one of the points of the next paragraph that says there's two ways to do that, right? Yes. So, so you could do that by putting an eat in an extension, and that's absolutely possible. And that might be desirable in most cases, right? But there's other cases. But if, if we're dealing with the case that we are going to write uh, X509 extensions per claim, then I completely agree with you. It's it's the other person's, other entity's job. Right, right. Okay? So here this text is trying to say that both mechanisms are legal and not trying to prescribe which is the case. Yeah, but but you you provide two examples and therefore yes. biasing architectural sorry um, influenced um, 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 decision steering here. So so now you think about X four four nine and eat, and that's all you do. So so there's no arbitrary way to do FIDO or to do uh, whatever other uh, proprietary uh, solutions. That's all proprietary the wrong word. Other solutions here. Um, so I'm, I'm I have a little. You you, you uh, lost me there, Mike. With, with, with creating creating a, a data format uh, uh, relationship here. I oh. I didn't follow you. I, are you worried about precluding other things or what? You lost me. Yeah, okay, so so you take two examples, which is fine because it's not only one, but still these two examples lead you in a direction. So so now you are thinking about X509 and uh, um, um, EAT, and you might not be thinking about uh, uh, FIDO, which is very important to uh, Lawrence, for example. So uh, if you look at 526, Michael is the one that didn't like that Etsy. Um, I thought you're now arguing that Etsy is important to you. That's what I'm hearing. Um, I think inclusiveness is important to me. So Etsy, yes, is important. Yeah, that, the end of 526, right, et cetera. I have my, to... only, my only concern is that we don't leave it, that we don't, that the ETC is, um, don't go do your, don't go roll your own. Come, to, come do something standardized. Please don't create another standard. Mm -hmm. We we have the we have the the verifier diagram that shows a whole bunch of inputs and a whole bunch of outputs in different coding formats. Yeah, and that is diverse enough for me to be okay with. Yeah, the text is not. Is this about the relying party? Do we need another diagram with the relying party having the same, similar sort of? I I don't think this is a. a the text on the screen is about both. Yep. I think this is a okay. general problem of going down to where we want to use data models which the architecture should not be concerned about that, that's the only thing i'm, I'm saying yeah the, I, I think that it should highlight at a single point there is diverse whatever ecosystem and we have this this octopus diagram that, that has a lot of inputs and outputs in various data formats as an example and we leave it at that and that i think in the text we should not go down to that level is the point of the 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 section to talk about extensibility of encoding formats. Yes, I think we should talk um, about extensibility and being able to adopt to multiple various data formats. If you read this document well, so to speak, and maybe let me, let me finish. Is Please. it extensibility about claims or extensibility about formats? Um, the Primarily the latter, although also the former as a separate point, but the main point of the section, because this is, we previously put in the diagram that Hank referred to as the octopus diagram, but there's no text before it, right? This is what uh, the text is that then uh, motivates, you can see, uh, what is it, 530, the following diagram, right? So this is the text that leads up and motivates that diagram. Okay. I agree with Dave. We have two levels here. We have, of course, the, the data model and then the actual encoding. Yes, correct. 
a difference not everybody follows, by the way. So we have to take care of being readable here. But still, I would uh, initially agree with Dave. Yeah, there are actually two levels here. Yeah. So the uh, even when we had the meeting at IETF out you know, at the uh, the hackathon or whatever, we said one of the goals was, hey, you know, we should motivate the fact that we need an information model. And I was, we want to we want to encode uh, claims. Um, in, um, you know, JWTs and CWTs, and so we need some way of abstracting that, and at least the architecture document didn't have to go into that detail, but it had to motivate the need for it, and that's what's going on here, is we're trying to motivate the need, for and that's the, this motivates having a common information model, that's 524, that's that paragraph, yeah. it says, here's why we need the ability to encode the same information in multiple formats here, and then there's the diagram that illustrates it. So I want to cut off here. Information model is independent of encoding format. Correct. And that's the right message. Correct. We, that's, that's I don't think important. there's any sort of biasing by just saying, you know, formatting is X outside of the information model, right? You guys are kind of talking around my point, right? Which I, and I don't actually know what you're talking about, to be honest. Um, uh, my, my concern was that, um, if, if someone's going to come up with a new encoding format that they come to the IETF. Ah, okay. That um, my major I, point, okay. That they I understand your comment here. And we have uh, a little bit of expert review and we go, well, it sure sounds like you want to encode or, or convey a CWT in a new other, in a DHCP option. Maybe that's all you need. You don't need to re-encode it in DHCP format, right? I simply want to have people come to the IETF and, and be a little, Get a little bit of expert review before they, they do something specific. That's what I'm trying to 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 say here. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a great thought. Um, yeah. the and I don't disagree with <clears throat> with your intent. And I and I think one of the things that is not mentioned explicitly in this text right now, and maybe should be, is what's the relationship to pre-existing vendor specific formats. And so the Etsy here is often a pre-existing vendor specific format. They're already sending claims. So for example, Intel already has SGX attestation. It has things that would be equivalent to claims that are in there right now. It's been shipping for years. Okay, that's the Etsy. Okay. Not something they want to standardize. And so here your point is what if you wanted to standardize things, but this is saying some of those encoding formats and the et cetera are actually non-standard. They're vendor specific ones that have been existing for a while now. Okay, yeah. so 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 hang on here. So uh, because uh, I think I, I I will suggest some text, but not immediately. What I want to know is, uh, um, are we happy enough with this text to merge it? Um, what I would like to do is merge it, generate a new rev of the draft, post it tonight, and someone I hope maybe me will will go through the diffs against last time and make a slide or two for tomorrow's meeting. Okay, this is Hank. Just highlighting a uh, standard ISG uh, comment here. Architectures are not about uh, data formats. Again. So uh, if we are talking about this, this should be an exception. The exception should be uh, condensed text-wise around the uh, uh, diagram about all the different formats, which I, sorry, called about for, for fun, the octopus diagram that says more than eight arms, I know. Um, um, and so so I would not, uh, what I would like to have is not to have sprinkled examples of formats around the text. And this I is- I don't want that either. Now. That's not my goal. That's not what I'm so, thinking But about. we have this right now. So if you accept this text, we have that. So, so you, you don't even want to say, uh, you, you don't even want to have the X, the- uh, I don't want to have examples here. I want to have examples condensed around the uh, Octopus diagram, and then uh, talk about it only there. So do we have one? So maybe, so maybe you should just say C figure, C figure six. Probably, yeah. That is better, uh, even if it's a forward reference, which I do not like. Um, it is better than than talking about it here because you all always like think like, oh, okay, it's about certificates. And and then people just mentally go down the wrong path. Oh, it's all about uh, yeah, exactly. and then people will mentally go down the path. So so that that's just that's just confusing, I assume. You okay with that idea, Dave? Um, I disagree with some of the stuff that Hank said, but I'm perfectly fine with C diagram, you know, C figure, whatever the number is, is the parenthetical part here. 
And I agree with everything. So yes to everything else that you said, Michael. Uh, some of the statements that Hank said I don't agree with, um, but that particular change I have no problem with. Okay. Yeah, we could talk about this more elaborately later. So I'm sorry that we are not con uh, resolving. I know. This right. so I'm exactly. gonna, just trying I'm to merge something I'm, for tomorrow. So yeah. I'm going to merge this. I'm going to change it to C diagram six. It is, and I'm going to post that that version. I'm fine with it. Eric? No, no issues. Frank? Yeah, I'm fine. Ned? Uh, I'm fine, uh, but I I uh, need to re read. I, I, I'm not, a, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying I agree with the text because I haven't read it, but. Does it agree with it or not, right? Okay. Yeah, I just, it's like, okay. I'll just read it and disagree with it or not. Okay. I mean, I, I will say that the text has been in the individual submission for a long time, and so the rest of the working group who are not on the call have had months to review it already. Sure. And this is Hank. I think there's more benefit to have this merged than there's damage. Sorry to have this merged. Doing it. Literally. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, there can be other comments on that issue, I suppose. So we have another. We have our virtual interim tomorrow at the same time. Yep. Um. And Ned, did you did, uh, did I hear you volunteer to make a slide? What? I said I would make. I'll make two slides or something with. We, with we have five minutes. We have five minutes for both architecture and use cases, and I think Nancy wants to have a discussion about the use cases in terms of what it means to adopt. <clears throat> so I'm th so it's two minutes for architecture and three minutes for use cases. Oh. So short. Okay. Okay. And then who's going to present that slide? Is that something that you're going to do as chair, Ned? Um, or the Michael's creating, or the one or two that Michael's creating? Is uh, it not, uh, no, I think it's. I, I think someone who's representing the work group, the 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 design team, should do that. So. Then I think Michael should, if he's going to prepare the slides. Yeah, oh, I agree with Dave here. Michael should do this. If you can do and are volunteering and not totally blocking this. <laughs> okay. Um, take a look at the issues if you have a few minutes. Um, there's a couple, two or three weeks old here. Maybe we should close or open or progress on. Okay. That's it for today, I think. Yeah, we're over. We'll, we'll see you all tomorrow then. Yeah. Bye. Yes.